you know, it's days like these where kind of you wake up and the air is cold and crisp and it kind of just wakes you up even more. And it just reminds me that there's just these seasons that we go through in the year that we kind of plan and prepare for. You know, when it's winter, we kind of prepare ourselves. We get our jackets out. We do the things that we're supposed to. And, uh, and we, we just naturally do that. We look at the weather app regularly to make sure that uh, we are planning properly for if we're going to be out all day, that we have what we need, that if it's going to be hot, we want to make sure that we don't have too many layers, whatever it might be. But when it comes to just our lives, often as we get older, we, we stop realizing that they're seasons. When we're younger, we get it. We get it because when we're younger, we're always looking to the next season. When I, when I get that degree, then I'll finally be able to go get that career. Then I'll finally maybe be able to find my spouse and be married and have kids and that season. I'm looking forward to this season and the next and whatever it might be. But as we get older, we get to a place where all of a sudden, we're kind of settled. We, we have the home, we have the career, we kind of just have the normal things about our life and we stop realizing that there are seasons that we go through. That no matter how young or how old you are, there are seasons we go through throughout our life. And somehow we've forgotten that, we've lost that. And we get to a place where we just are, are living a mundane, kind of just normal, uh, boring, uh, we feel like nothing is moving in the right direction type of life because we're not realizing the season we're in. And we're all in a season. The scripture speaks about that. God talks about different seasons that we go through. Some of those he talks about and he explains uh, that there's this moment where you are the branch and he says, I'm the vine, you're the branch. And then he goes on to explain that more and he he says that God will come and he will prune the branch. There's seasons that we go through that feel better, that there's the harvest season and everything is kind of coming to and uh, we have all the resources, but then there's other seasons. There's the summer season where nothing's really growing. It's just kind of existing. The winter season where everything's in hibernation. We all face seasons and you're facing a season in your life right now. Maybe you've just come out of a season. Maybe you're just going into a season. Maybe you feel like you've been stuck in a season for a while. Here's the thing. For all of us, we're facing a season, and for many of us, we've forgotten that. We've stopped realizing that we go through seasons in our faith, in our lives, wherever we're at. And, and God is very clear about that when he explains the different seasons we go through. And he says in Ecclesiastes, for everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to turn away, a time to search and a time to quit searching, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be quiet and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. No matter who you are, no matter where you're at, you're going through a season and there's a time that you're in and we need to what is the art of how do we live? How do we have a fruitful faith? How do we experience the blessings of life and understand the season we're in and what that means and how we can thrive in that season? You know, often we go through life and we don't realize how we got where we got, especially with regard to seasons. We enter one season or we exit one season and we don't always realize what season we were just in or what we're going into. For many of you, you've just entered the pruning season. Maybe you've been in it for a while. The pruning season is something we see throughout scripture, God kind of speaks to. 
he explains, I am the vine, you are the branch. And then he says, and the father comes and he prunes the branch. And, and the pruning process, if you've gardened any of that kind of stuff, you know this, that the pruning process is not always comfortable and it doesn't always look the best right after because what you're doing is you're taking some things away to actually provide for an opportunity for better and greater growth. Maybe you're in the pruning season that there are things in your life that feel like they're getting taken away, they're falling apart, whatever it might be, but it's actually in the opportunity that God is providing so that you can step into that next season, that next opportunity, that you would grow and mature even spiritually. The pruning season, it's a tough one. It's a pruning season where things get cut away, where maybe it's a relationship you've had for so long and you're just some of the boys and you're so, you get along, all these things, but the problem over time is that maybe it's those relationships that don't bring you closer to Jesus, but take you further. And those are the things that need to be pruned and taken away. Maybe it's the thing that needs to get cut away as an old mindset, that you have this mindset of who you are, of the mistakes you've made, of the sin that you've committed, of whatever it might be, and you continue to miss and forget the grace of Jesus. And it's the pruning that cuts that away. Some of you, you need to cut away the the, the reality of uh, your own habits, that you've started bad habits, that you have habits in your life that you've just continued to indelve in, but it's a moment and realization that that is what needs to be cut away, taken away for the season ahead. It's the pruning season that becomes so difficult, but it's the pruning season where God is working and taking away. Scripture speaks of it this way, where God says, I am continuing a work in you until it's completion. That you understand that. Stop and think about that for a moment. That God is continuing a work in you. The only way to continue a work until it's completion, perfection, is that some things need to go away so you can be stronger. This is the pruning season. Maybe you're in the pruning season today. How do you respond? How do you walk in faith? How do you trust God and allow him to take those things away that need to be taken away? so that you can grow and continue to follow Him. You know, they say the older the vine, the better the wine. And this is kind of a famous or understanding between farming culture because of what happens. Uh, no matter the season, year in, year out, what happens is the roots and the, the trunk grows and as it grows, it builds up more sources and availability for carbohydrates. What that then does is every year that there's a new harvest, it has been providing all those nutrients to the grape to provide the best grape it could. The older the vine, the better the wine. This is something that everyone understands in the farming culture. And this is why they also wouldn't look at this apple tree and be surprised that it has no fruit in the middle of winter. That's not when it provides the fruit. Right now, there is something happening in this tree that is providing nutrients and resources, and it is becoming more and more healthy so that in the next season, it'll begin producing fruit again. This is the stretching season. You might be in the stretching season. This is a tough season because on the outside, it doesn't feel like anything's growing. You don't see anything, but what's happening is on the inside, God is working. See, here's the thing. You will never step into your calling if you don't yet have your character figured out. You have to figure out your character. This is what happens in the stretching season. Your character will be built up for your calling. This is a good one. This is an interesting one. Jesus speaks about the vine. He speaks about this farming culture over and over again. And it's important for us to understand in John 15, he says, I am the vine, you are the branch. Remain in me and I will remain in you and you will produce great fruit. And then he even goes, but stay uh, separate from me uh, and, and you will be thrown into the fire, that you become worthless, that if we live our lives just of our own flesh, of our own accord, it will never end well. And he says, remain in me. And he uses this language of a vineyard, of, of a vine and a branch. And for many of us, we kind of understand the concept, but you and I, we don't come from a culture where there's a lot of farming. We don't come from a culture where back then they would grow everything in their own homes, in their, in their yard, so that they could provide for their family and maybe sell some for more money. This is what was normal for them. If Jesus was here today, likely he would speak about a different illustration. Maybe he would say, hey, I am the power source 
and, and all of us nowadays, we're so attached to smartphones and we need this all the time and, and, and we're accessed and connected and we feel like we're missing a limb because we're missing our phone, these kind of things. And, and what he would say is, your phone is worthless. It's a paperweight unless you occasionally get it back to a charging source. You have to come back and reconnect. And in the same way for us, if you want to grow, if you want to discover health, in the middle of the stretching season, the most important thing you can hear is, remain in me. Stay connected to Christ. No matter what season you're in, this is the most important thing. To get you through that season, you need to remain in Him. It's the dry season that can be the heaviest and the hardest and all of us have gone, will go through, or are in this season. It's the season where relationships just feel like they're falling apart. They kind of are there, but you just don't feel anything. It's, it's the marriage where you just feel like you guys are just existing, but not thriving. It's the career that you thought was gonna bring you so much fulfillment and meaning and purpose but you're just left doing a nine to five without any joy. And it's with our faith as well, where you, you've tried to go to church and you, you've tried to read your Bible and you've tried to pray, but it just feels like God's silent. And you're left here not feeling anything. And it's in a season like that, that so much damage can happen. It's in a season like that that we can be, man, we, we can fall so far. I feel like it's in a season like that where Jesus is in a garden and he knows he's just a few short hours from a lot of pain and a lot of difficulty. And he goes to spend some time with God. And he, he's at this place where it says he, he either is tears of or sweating blood. And he asked God, take this from me. But then his next response is, but if this is your will, like that's what I'm gonna do. And you would think at that moment, like then everything is meant to be better and just solved and like everything's good. But what will happen next is Jesus is arrested. He will be persecuted, beaten, and ultimately executed. And it still would take multiple days before disciples would really understand what happened. That's a dry season. That's difficult. That's heavy. And it's in this moment where they would see and encounter a resurrected Jesus. And it's in this moment where you and I as well can know that ultimately what Christ went through and the, the punishment and the execution and the cross and all this pain ultimately makes so much sense and brings so much hope. But for so many of us, we can look at someone else and say, we get it, but for us, we don't. And you're, you're facing a, a dry season, a difficult season, and everyone else is, it just feels like, like you're always giving and you're never getting, you're pouring into, but you're never being poured into. And it's just, man, you're just left here empty but it's in the dry season that if you could just see, remain faithful, endure, remain connected. And it's in this dry season where God is strengthening. It's in this dry season where you put your trust in God in all seasons, in all circumstances, you begin to see his faithfulness even when you feel like you feel nothing. And then we arrive at the harvest season. And the harvest season is what we all desire. It's what we want. It's, it's the fruits of our labor finally coming to fruition. It's, it's the relationships that are working so perfectly and just feel like everything's uh, just, man, so good. It feels like marriage is spot on, dating, whatever it might be. It's the career that we have. Like we finally feel like we're doing what we're meant to do. Everything is great. You're reaping the harvest. 
That's what we all want. That's what we desire. And it's a moment where we think about all the different seasons that we go through in our life and we finally arrive at the harvest, the one that finally feels so good. And it's this moment where when we start to just look back over the course of different seasons where maybe we start to see the full picture of what God has been doing, his plan all along, why we went through those difficult times for this moment right here, right now. And there's a moment like that where Jesus sits at a table with his disciples. And they've done this many times, but this time is different. And he sits with his disciples and he begins to explain something. And there's bread at the table and he, he looks at it and he says, this bread, it represents my body. And you and I, what we know is a fuller picture of what that means. Where, where Christ is explaining, he came to this earth in flesh for us to carry on his body the sins of the world, your sins and mine. And it's in this moment where he says, this bread represents my body and it will be persecuted and beaten and bruised. And then he says, now, every time you're together, take that bread and just take a piece of it and remember me. But he doesn't stop there. Then he looks at this wine. And for us, we start to see a fuller picture of that. Jesus has spoken about the vineyard and all these different things all along. And here he finally talks about it and he, he looks at the wine and he explains, this wine, it represents my blood. And, and my blood will be poured out. And my blood will cover the sins of the earth, of your sins and mine. And my blood will be the thing that will turn something crimson as white as snow. And I just imagine as Jesus is sitting at this table, preparing this moment and he takes that wine and he begins to pour it in. And there's something interesting even in this moment where like so often we're looking for other people to pour into us, uh, a spouse, a relationship to provide that need that we have, that want that we, we're, we're seeking, that career. Finally, that'll be my purpose in life. All these things we're looking all the time and and even here in this moment, maybe it's another realization. You will never get what you need from other people. Only Christ can provide that. And he says this, this is my blood. What will purify you and clean you. The, the sacrifice that they have gone through over and over of animals. Finally, this is the sacrifice that solves it once and for all. And he says, every time you're together, take this in remembrance of me. For many of us, maybe right now as you're watching this, you, you, you've maybe for the first time in a long time realized that there are seasons to life and you've been going through those different seasons and maybe you're in a, a difficult season today. Maybe you're in a, a season that's stretching and, and man, you're not always seeing the fruits of what you're going through. Maybe you're in a season where it just feels like things are getting taken away and you're not sure what's going on. But maybe right now is the final picture and you're finally seeing what God has been doing all along. And maybe today is the day where you are realizing, I need to recommit and be reconnected to the vine, to Christ, because I have over the course of time disconnected from him and focused on myself. Maybe today you're watching this and someone sent you it. You came across it randomly. You, you got here intentionally, however you got here. And maybe this is the moment that God is going to use to speak to you and that you would recognize Jesus as your Lord and Savior. See, the most important thing you could ever do is believe, have faith in Christ. And all you have to do is a simple prayer, a response to him, an acceptance of him. Right now, I want to encourage you, just repeat these words after me, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing right now, just a pause and a realization of who Christ is, that you would accept him and your entire life will change forever. You'll begin to see the seasons come through and you'll understand them better for yourself. Repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for your amazing grace. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I put my faith in you and my trust in you. 
God, now I will follow you all the days that I live. Again, thank you for your mercy. And it's all found and only in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you said that prayer for the very first time, man, it doesn't stop here. I want you to understand one thing. When we say believe, that is not just a cognitive understanding, but it is also an, a life that you give. It is an understanding both in your, in your mind, but also in your actions to trust and to obey. And now I want to encourage you. Maybe if you're local, if you're closer to me, to our church, Belong Church, would love to connect you and would love to find family with you and do community with you. Maybe if you're a little more remote, man, we would love to connect with you and also help you find a local church that is gonna change your life. Christ says, I came for the church. He loves the church. He has a plan for the church and he has a plan for you. No matter what season you're in, God is working. Stay connected to him, focus on him and start to see his sovereignty, his power, and his grace in your life.